welcome back to the podcast. It's good to be here with you. My name's Haley. I'm a nutritionist. I am a brain training weight loss coach. And today we've got another postpartum weight loss episode for you. The reason I'm doing another postpartum weight loss episode is because ever since I did the lose the baby weight with me challenge back in the fall, and it's currently like end of February, so late winter, I just had a lot of people reaching out and asking me about that specifically. Um, I had a couple new clients come in that were trying to lose the postpartum weight. And I thought that maybe this is something that we're just we're not talking about enough or there just isn't enough information out there about losing weight after you've had a baby when you are kind of in this very in a in a space of your life where you are getting so much advice from everybody you're a little bit more vulnerable and maybe feeling a little bit more confused so this isn't meant to like turn anyone off if you're not tra- if you're not postpartum and that you're not in that space right now. These tips you can apply even if you're not postpartum. They're not like exclusive to postpartum, but these are the these are some of the things that you experience much more heavily when you're postpartum and are going to be really helpful for you if you're in that space. But if you're not, don't turn this off. This, there's still going to be value for you here. Um, and I'm actually going to share two more diet geared strategies, which people, people kind of get upset with me sometimes for not talking more about what diet should I be eating? What should I be eating? Can you just tell me what to eat? No, I can't. There's, I can't, I could, I don't want to. There's a very specific reason and it's, there's so much diet information out there. There's way too much. Most people who come to me are very confused about what to eat. They've done so many diets and they're all conflicting. And they're like, I don't even know what to eat anymore. And there it's still, even though they've done all these diets and they've been told what to eat so, so much, they're still like, I I still don't know what to eat. Can you just tell me what to eat? They're just looking for one more person to tell them what to do. And what I want you and everyone that I work with to be able to do is to be able to rely on yourself to know what to eat. So I want to teach you the skills of knowing what works for your body, being able to listen to your natural signals around when it's time to fuel and when it's time to stop fueling and what fuel actually feels good for you. That's the skill that you really need that you have lost over time. Many of us lose this over time for multiple reasons. And dieting or prescribing diets does not help with that. It simply puts you right back in the space of I can't rely on myself to know what to eat. I need someone else to tell me what to do. And nobody can know better what your body needs and wants and where it is in terms of how much fuel it needs than you and your body. So what I want to do is teach you how to be able to listen to your body. That's what the skill that you need. You don't need to be told what to do. You need to be able to listen to yourself. So that's why I don't talk about what I eat or what you should eat or specific diet strategies, blah, 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 all the things. First of all, it's way overdone. I just, it's boring at this point. Second of all, it's not gonna be helpful for you, actually. You think it's gonna be helpful for you. You think it's the answer, but it's really not. So that's why, but I am gonna share two things, very specific things in this podcast um, that are going to be helpful for you, whether you're postpartum or not, that are diet related. I might kick myself later for for touching on them at all. Maybe I should just not do that. But I think for these, for my ladies who are postpartum, 
these are going to be helpful. So let's dive in. This is five things to do to lose the weight postpartum. So first and foremost, give yourself time, the time that you need. Wait until you are ready physically, mentally to start focusing on your weight. That might not be until you're a year out. It might be when you're a couple of weeks out, but either way, you only you can know when you're ready for this and putting yourself on any sort of timeline is not going to be helpful. It's going to backfire on you. You don't need to jump into this. There is no need to jump in and start losing weight when you're not ready. And if you feel like there is, then you have a mindset block that you need to work on because your health outside of that weight piece and your baby's health are much more important at this time because you're in just such a delicate physical, hormonal, and mental state. Weight is not really a big thing. So for me, I really, this was my first baby. I had no idea what to expect. And I kind of thought based on my mental fortitude, my physical fortitude, does anyone say that? <laughs> my <laughs> physical strength and abilities. <laughs> I'm just laughing at it. Is physical fortitude a thing? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> but based on how I handle things physically and mentally, I was like, I'm gonna pop this baby out and I'm gonna be ready to hit the ground running. And I was extremely shocked. <laughs> Any of you who have had a baby before are probably gonna think I'm a total idiot. And many people before I had the baby when I was you know, very pregnant and I was talking to, not necessarily about losing the weight, but about like getting back to work and all that stuff. They were like, you're, you're, in, for, <laughs> you're in for shock because you are not going to be feeling the way you think you're going to be feeling. And they were right. <laughs> they were so right. So I didn't put a specific timeline on losing my postpartum weight, but I did think like within a week, I'll probably be ready to start to start. <laughs> I'm just laughing because I like, I'm picturing myself a week out of having that baby. <laughs> I was like, I couldn't walk. I couldn't stand. I couldn't make food. I was like in bed, you know, so <laughs> there was just no way. Um, and <laughs> so I, I really realized at that point, like, you know, I'm letting go of this timeline. <laughs> There's no need to do this. It's not even something I want to do right now. I really just want to hang out with my baby and like enjoy this special time and not be focused on losing weight. Like what? Not at all. So no matter where you are in this, in, in your postpartum journey, don't start getting into this mindset of beating yourself up for not being ready to do it. If you're not ready, you're not ready. And that's okay. And it doesn't matter if you're a year out or two years out. If you're not ready, you're not ready. And that is okay. Be okay with that. Be in that. I had somebody reach out to me. Um, I can't remember how, maybe eight weeks postpartum. And she's like, you know, the baby's not sleeping. And I'm, I'm like, my stress is just out the window and um, through the roof. And I'm not sleeping. And I'm, I'm like gaining weight now postpartum like more weight postpartum because i'm so stressed out and because i'm not sleeping what do i do and i was like you don't need don't just take care of yourself take care of this baby be in this moment that is really tough and really challenging don't add something to your plate don't add something else to your mind that you have to like have to i say very intentionally deal with and do like just be in this now in this tough situation and manage that don't put anything else on your plate 
and that's really true. Like you, you are going to get to a place where it's normal and stable and you feel a lot better and you're getting the sleep that you need and your body has like healed and your hormones have calmed down. You will get there. If eight weeks out isn't, isn't the time, then it's not the time. Just give it, give it time, give it whatever time it needs. Um, I, I mentioned this already, but starting too early is can backfire. You're, you are going to be like spinning your wheels in the wrong direction or just spinning your wheels. Do, do people say, again, uh, like I said a phrase and I'm like, I don't even know if that's a phrase, but getting started too early when you're not ready physically, mentally, hormonally, you're not getting enough sleep. And really there's a bigger priority for you at that time is just like you're throwing gas on a fire. Like it's not going to be beneficial. So really wait until you have the mental time and space to do this. Your hormones are calmed down. You're, you're getting some rest. You're able to like physically be up and move around, not so that you can work out, but so that you like, know like, okay, I feel okay to like, I feel physically okay to be able to like get out of bed now. Just having that is important. Not even for the exercise, like, you need to be able to have that for yourself, have that peace of mind for yourself that like you're okay physically. So um, again, if that means waiting longer, figure out how to make yourself okay with that. It is okay. Um, I had somebody come to me a year out and actually, more than one person. One person was a year and one person was like two years. And that's okay. Figure out how to mentally get yourself to a place where that is okay. Um, second, number two, stop listening to other people. I said this in my other postpartum weight loss podcast, um, but dear Lord, everyone has an opinion and a story about losing weight after having a baby. You are going to get more advice about this particular thing than maybe any other advice that you're gonna get in your life. Well, maybe you're gonna get more about like child rearing. I don't know, I'm not there yet because I just have a newborn. But dear Lord, I got so many stories and so much advice. It is possible that because I'm in the weight loss space, people felt like they wanted to like share their stories with me more than they are with you. But this was my experience hundred percent. Everybody wanted to talk about their postpartum weight loss story and what it, what it's going to look like. And everybody presents their story as fact. So keep that in mind. No, no, none of what these people are telling you is fact. It is simply their story, their experience. It's not factual. And I think that's why postpartum weight loss is so tricky is because so many people have a story and we, as the new mom, take those stories in as factual. My weight loss has to be challenging. It has to be hard. It has to take a long time. It has to be that I may never be able to take it off completely. Or it has to be easy because I'm breastfeeding. I am burning so many calories. This should be the easiest weight I've ever lost in my life. It should just pop right off. This shouldn't be a problem. Like the pendulum swings both ways. It's wild. It is wild where these stories go. They're, they're like complete opposite. Yet we take all of them in as fact. This is how it should be. And this is how it will be for me. And when you do that, you are allowing other people's stories to become your story. So this was one thing when I started noticing this, I had this had not occurred to me when I was thinking about losing the weight after having the baby. I didn't ever anticipate that I was going to get this many stories and this much advice. And when I started seeing my brain put these stories kind of together as like what my timeline was going to be, I realized, oh crap, I need to, 
I'm unintentionally allowing all of these people to write my weight, my postpartum weight loss story for me. Cause I'm taking in what they're telling me as real and factual and like how it's going to be for me. And that's not helpful. So I need to put some intention on how this is going to look for me. I need to let go of all of these stories that are kind of spinning in the back of my mind unconsciously. I'm not really realizing that I'm internalizing them, but I am. And I need to put them aside as that's so-and-so's story and that's so-and-so's story. And it doesn't have to be my story. This is what my story is going to look like. And so what I want to offer to you, whether you are postpartum or not, intentionally writing your story. You need to do this no matter where you are in this journey. You could be pregnant. You could be a year out. You could be a couple days out. You could be just thinking about half getting pregnant. <laughs> you could be not pregnant, not postpartum, none of those things, 50 years old, trying to lose the weight. You need to write this story for yourself and decide what your journey is going to look like. So here's a couple of really good questions to ask yourself to help you flesh that out. And what those questions are is, why do I want to lose this weight? So that was one thing I did for me. Like, what is my driving force behind this? And I want to offer, there's so many ways to take this, but you want to find something that means a lot to you. Having a why, having a strong reason behind this is helpful because you now have a baby and you're probably very distracted. You're probably a little bit more stressed out and on a little bit less sleep than before. And having a strong why that, that you feel very connected to, this is something I really want for this reason and this reason, those can be vanity reasons. That is always okay. Some people come to me and they're like, I want to lose weight just because I want to like look good in a bikini. Is that wrong? No, if that's your reason, that's fantastic. Just, it just has to mean something to you. It doesn't matter what, you know, the world as a whole thinks of it. <laughs> it just, it really it matters where you are in your mindset about it. And if it's like something that feels kind of negative, or has like a negative connotation behind it, I want to like steer you away from that. You want something that's powerfully positive for you um, and feels empowering for you. So one of my big whys was like, I want to be an example of what's possible with this and be kind of vulnerable in, in my weight loss journey postpartum. I'm willing to see ups and see downs and, and struggle with this if, if I do. And I'm willing to share and talk about that. But like, that was kind of one of my whys. Like, I want to be an example of how this can look that we can maybe let go of this old stigma that's hanging around that if we have a baby, we're going to struggle with our weight forever after that. That's a big one. It's out there. It's almost unconscious at this point. Like we just kind of absorb it through our lives and then we absorb it through every relative that you've ever had telling you a story about how their weight loss after having a baby looked. And it's just there and we believe it, we internalize it. We think it's true. And maybe that doesn't have to be true. And I was also going into this with this open mind. Now I'm just kind of getting sidetracked talking about my story, but with this open mind of like, maybe it will be much more difficult. And that's okay, I'm willing to figure it out. I'm willing to have this be hard and to struggle with it and figure out what it is. But what I discovered in this process of, of losing the baby weight was that I think it's really hard because of the mindset. I really think, obviously hormones, sleep, stress, like this whole new life in your life that you have to take care of in your and you're 100% responsible for is a factor. But outside of that, it's the story. It's the mindset that we have built up about how this has to look and how it's going to look that is making it really challenging. And 
So writing your story is that much more important for that. Okay, so that was question number one. Why do I wanna lose this weight? Finding like a good powerful why, something that means something to you that you can hang on to when times get tough. Um, how will I handle setbacks? How will I handle setbacks? I think sometimes when we go into starting to lose weight, we assume that it's going to be this like smooth sailing, perfect line down trajectory, and we're never going to struggle. And it is not true. What I tell my clients all the time is weight loss often looks like a staircase. So there is a, a line down that's, you know, our weight going down, mentally feeling really easy and effortless. And then that line goes across the scale doesn't move, or maybe it moves up a little bit. It feels really hard. We are running into our brain, which is like talking to us about food. And it, it's like, didn't I get through this? Like, why am I still stuck on this? And we get into this big mental block about it. And then all of a sudden we work through that and the scale drops again. And then we hit another plateau. And oftentimes that's what it looks like. It's not this perfect lying down. And when we go into something and we aren't prepared that there will be setbacks, when we go into it mentally thinking this is going to be perfect and easy and simple and it's done, then when we do hit a setback, when we hit a snag, when the weight, when the scale goes up, when we eat something that we told ourselves we weren't going to eat, we're like freaked out by it. And we're like, holy crap, this isn't working. I need to quit or give up. I, you know, I need to do something else. A lot of times that one comes up. People in my program will be losing weight. They're doing, they're like, oh my God, it's amazing. It's so easy and effortless and it's awesome. And then they come to coaching and they're like, well, it's up, the scale's up a pound and you know, I just can't get on board this week and I don't know what's going on. I, I, I don't think this program's working for me. I'm like, listen to your mindset right now. You're telling yourself it's not working. It was working. And because the scale went up, all of a sudden you're ready to jump ship and look for something else. And that's not the answer, my friend. The answer is getting your mindset on board that this is working and it does work. I need to keep doing more of that and that setbacks are gonna happen. And I wanna decide how I'm gonna handle them ahead of time. So asking yourself, how am I going to handle setbacks if the scale does go up or if, or if the scale doesn't go down for the first two weeks or three weeks? How am I going to handle that mentally? Am I going to keep going? Am I going to give up? Am I going to eat the entire pantry? How will I handle that? If there's a week where my baby's not sleeping or my hormones take a really big shift, how am I going to handle that? Am I going to give up? and quit? Or am I going to say, okay, I'm going to take this time for, to get myself right, to get the sleep that I need. I'm going to press pause and, and take care of me and take care of my baby. And then I'm going to resume as soon as I feel ready again. Like just making that decision ahead of time is really powerful. And it really helps you prepare for this to not be perfect. It will not be perfect. Uh, the third question you can ask is, why do I want to lose weight more than I want to use food to help me manage X emotion? So we all have different emotions that we try to avoid with food. Stress is a very common one. Um, so I'm going to use stress. That was, that was one that was coming up for me, kind of stress and like overwhelm um, when I was working my way through my 10 pounds postpartum i when i when the baby wasn't sleeping when i just felt overwhelmed like there was these days where it was like there's piles of laundry all over the house the the sink is full of dirty dishes i've got a baby that is cluster feeding and has been on me the entire day i've had no water i'm like and you just feel so overwhelmed and so tired. It was like, I just want to go to the pantry and eat all the things so I don't have to experience this right now. And so a really powerful question for me 
to keep asking myself in those moments was, why do I want to lose weight more than I want to use food to deal with this stress right now? And one of my answers was like, I just, I don't want the physical, I'm already physically maxed out. (laughs) I pushed a baby out. I'm tired. I'm, my body is making milk and I'm breastfeeding this baby. Like I'm physically maxed out. I don't need the extra burden of like a ton of nasty snacks making me feel even worse. And I really want to feel like good in my body. And I want to work towards that. And I want to show people that it's possible to manage the stress of being a new mom and lose weight. That we can do both of those. And that food can simply be fuel for me to do all the things that my body needs to do. And I get to feel really good about that. So that was kind of like where I would go in my mind when I asked myself that question. And that was so wonderful and powerful for me to be able to like, just be like, yeah, hell no, I'm not going to the pantry. Like that's not serving me. It's not helpful (laughs) at all. I need to just be in this moment of stress and overwhelm and that's okay. Like I can handle it. Um, So those are three really good questions to be asking yourself. Number three on this list of five things is you need to start listening to your body. This kind of goes in tandem with number two. Stop listening to other people, start listening to your body. And this is where we, cross the line of like, this isn't just postpartum. This is at any point in your weight loss journey, because we tend to take on other people's stories about losing weight as fact. So-and-so did this diet and that worked for them. That must be the only thing that works. So-and-so couldn't lose weight after 50 years old. And so that must be the age at which I'm guaranteed to never be able to lose weight again. Like whatever that looks like. We, what you need to do is to be able to listen to your body, to, to let other people have their stories and have their advice and just kind of like, I'm rubber and you're glue, like whatever you say bounces off of me. It sticks to you. That's your story. It doesn't have to be my story. I'm happy to sit here and listen to your story and, you know, offer any condolences that might be necessary, but that doesn't have to be my story. I'm going to listen to my body. And so this is where I'm, I'm going to kind of go into a caveat here, but a lot of time I do have a ton of people who come to me at kind of like that 45, 50 year old range and metabolism has shifted. Hormones have shifted and they're like, I've tried so many things and it's just not working. And I don't know if you can help me. Like I I'm almost at this point where I just believe that it's my metabolisms and my hormones that are completely preventing me from being able to weigh what I want to weigh. And I'm not sure that there's anything that you have to offer that can help. And I believe so strongly that I do have something to offer that helps because those people who come into my program lose weight and they're completely blown away and they didn't have to do any dieting or restricting. And they do that because I teach them what I was soapboxing about at the beginning of this episode, which is being able to listen to their body. This is so important. It's so important. Your body has all of these natural built-in signals to let you know how much fuel it needs to weigh exactly what it should weigh, to weigh exactly what it wants to weigh. You just don't know how to listen anymore. These are, we are born with these, but we forget how to listen to them over time. And so what I do, what I teach is like, I'm gonna teach you how to be able to listen again. It doesn't matter where your hormones or your metabolism are because they are playing a role in those signals. So as long as you can listen to the signals, 
it doesn't the hormones and the metabolism don't really matter so much because they they're dictating the signals if that makes sense and also hormones and metabolism that's a huge mindset thing too every time you tell yourself well my metabolism sucks you're also saying might as well just eat another cookie because my metabolism sucks like we get down this path of like it's out of my control nothing i can do might as well just eat all the things which is preventing you from losing weight and at that point it is not your metabolism it is only your mindset yes your metabolism might shift through your life and so will your signals your body's natural signals they will shift as your metabolism shifts as your metabolism shifts so just because you can't eat the same amount that you used to doesn't mean that you can't lose weight it means that you need to shift how much food you're eating and your body will tell you that it is telling you that you just aren't used to listening you're just used to doing the same exact thing that i have always done and once you can start listening again it's really easy to make that change to to make that shift so same thing for postpartum you need to be able to listen to your own body um and it's i think it's kind of umpteenth more important when we're postpartum because there's so much more going on in our body there's so much more hormones there's so much more physical stress and distress whether you had um a natural birth or a c-section your body has gone through a lot regardless it was pregnant for nine months it it i read the other day and maybe this is totally false but i read the other day that every day you're pregnant it's the equivalent of like running a marathon physically on your body because it's just so much energy requirement and building of new material requirement and stress like physical stress on your body it's the same as running a marathon every day so regardless of how you had your baby you also ran a marathon every day for nine months and your body is just like there's so much going on so its needs have shifted for sure in multiple ways hormonally physically you're also probably maybe trying to make milk so it's just changed and the more you can listen to your body the easier this process is is going to be the the less you're going to need to kind of diet your way into it into the weight loss which will feel probably pretty uncomfortable because you're again you're listening to somebody else tell you what to do when your body has is probably giving you an a plethora of signals about what it actually needs and those probably aren't anywhere near what they were before you were pregnant um so being able to just slow down and listen to your body so i had this client she was like a year postpartum um or she is a year postpartum and she came and said i you know I, I think gained 50 pounds during the pregnancy. Um, and I lost half of that after I had the baby, just kind of like water weight and, and all of that came off, but the rest of it didn't, it's just stuck around. She's like, I eat really healthy. I eat super clean. Like there's nothing outside of that clean diet that I'm doing that's causing this weight. And I was like, I think there's just one thing that we need to focus on. And this one thing has nothing to do with how clean you eat. It's simply being able to listen to your body. So we did an entire coaching session just on, this is how you listen to your body. And it's a huge part of my program too. So she also got it through that, but I coached her on it. And then she went through it in the program, learning, learning how to do that how to reestablish that brain body connection. And she texted me maybe like five or seven days after she started. And she was like, I'm literally shocked. I lost five pounds. I haven't lost a pound in an entire year other than like right after I had the baby. And I lost five pounds. I thought it was impossible. She kept saying that to me. She was like, I just don't know if it's possible. And I was like, maybe it won't be possible. And that's okay. Like maybe your hormones just aren't at a place where your body's ready to release the weight. 
but let's give it a try. Let's give this one thing a try. And she did, she was willing to do that. She was willing to fail and be vulnerable and have it not work. And she was like, holy crap, I lost five pounds. Like what is happening? I feel like I didn't even do anything. And I was like, there we go. And then two weeks later, she was like, I'm down eight pounds. Eight pounds in two weeks from that one thing. That's how powerful it is, you guys. And that's how just opening that door, cracking that door into like, maybe there's something that I'm missing right now that isn't a diet, even though I eat healthy, even though I feel like nothing could work for me, maybe there is something out there that just I haven't heard about, I haven't tried yet. I want to offer that this is that thing, being able to listen to your body. It's so important, especially postpartum. Okay, on to number four. Now we get into my specific dietary advice. And number four is water. Super simple. A lot of people don't know that in order to for your body to tap into fat for fuel, you have to be hydrated. You gotta be drinking water. So this was challenging for me. I'm a person who drinks a decent amount of water, but when you are running around the house trying to do the laundry for the 50th time and you know find something to eat, or you're not running around the house because you're laid up in bed and you can barely get up and you have a baby attached to you, drinking water was a little bit challenging. So um, my husband was really helpful with that. He made sure there was always water on my nightstand. And I just kept having to remind myself, drink some water. And minerals, y'all, minerals are imperative at this point. Because your body, right after you have that baby, you start flushing out so much fluid, so much fluid. So as that fluid flushes out, it's flushing out a lot of minerals with it. And you need to be able to like, be replenishing those. So one of my favorites is called Beam, B-E-A-M, Minerals. It's called, there's a specific, it's called Micro Boost. Um, and it's a liquid that you drink. It's flavorless, although it is brown, but it doesn't taste like anything. Um, and it is a concentrated mineral supplement. It's helped me so much. And I, especially in that postpartum space, was taking that, I was taking magnesium, um, I was also continuing to take a prenatal. All of those will have some minerals that are going to be helpful for you keeping your body where it needs to be in terms of that. Um, and then also like if you want to add some Himalayan sea salt, some uh, lemon to your water, maybe even doing coconut water, which I'm honestly not huge on outside of this, but you got to be getting your fluids in and replenishing those minerals. It's going to be really helpful for helping to balance your hormones to allowing your body to be able to use fat for fuel, even if you're not trying to do that at the beginning, um, because you're not trying to focus on losing weight at the beginning, just making sure that you're hydrated so that if your body has to, if, if you go, you know, if you happen to have a long night's sleep or if you're just laid up in bed with no snacks or anything for a while, like your body is going to be able to go into your fat and use that for fuel. Um, and it's, did I already say balancing of the hormones? I, I can't remember, but it's really, it's so important. Um, and it was something that I struggled with. So I wanted to mention that one. And number five is protein. Again, I rarely am on here talking about the specific foods you need to eat and your macronutrients, blah, 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 blah. I'm so sick of hearing about it. But when you have carried a baby for nine months and then had um, labor, delivery, C-section, your body physically has gone through a lot. And what it needs to do is rebuild and repair, rebuild and repair. And that's what protein will help it do. Protein is also very satiating. It's the most satiating of the macronutrients. So it's very helpful for helping you feel like you have had enough food. If you're just eating like simple carbs um, or you're just not getting enough protein, likely you are not gonna have the levels of satiation that are gonna be helpful for you. 
that's your body saying like, we need more protein. <laughs> Please give us some protein. Um, so protein is huge. I did a lot of eggs. I did a lot of organ meats, which might be weird for some people, but I really wanted all of those minerals. So liver in particular was a big one I did throughout my pregnancy and postpartum. Um, I actually do a ground beef that has liver in it. And you can ju also just buy livers and like mix it into your ground, like chop it up and mix it into your ground beef. Um, and so I did that both during pregnancy and postpartum and just focusing on like, okay, have I had enough protein today? Where am I like hunger satiation wise? The other thing that protein does when it helps you feel satiated, that is it balancing hormones. So it's really helpful with in this vulnerable, like hormonal state to, to be balancing those out in whatever way you can protein can help with that too. So rebuild and repair and also help to balance those hormones. And if you're doing like an organ meat, that's bringing in a ton of really essential nutrients that your body needs to replenish after you've gone through this very intense process. Okay. So those are my five things for postpartum weight loss. Um, I think that they're also going to be helpful for you, even if you're not postpartum at any point, you know, in your weight loss journey, it's going to be helpful. So if you are struggling to lose weight, if you feel stuck, if you feel unmotivated, um, if you're postpartum and feeling really confused about losing weight and you want to go into this without the stress of needing to diet on top of the current stress that you're already experiencing with a new baby, come work with me come work with me. It's a completely different approach. It's weight loss that actually feels good and feels effortless and teaches you these really imperative skills so that you get to walk away at some point from this and you're not stuck dieting for the rest of your life. Okay. That's what I've got for you today. I'll see you on the next episode. Bye.